Sony just released the brand new ZV-1 Mark II and I bet your biggest question is what is new about it? What are the differences compared to the original ZV-1 and is it worth upgrading? Let's talk about it. Now, before we dive into the most important differences between the two cameras, let's quickly talk about what they kept in the Mark II. Now, they both use the same sensor. They both shoot up to 4K and 30 frames per second, and they have active stabilization. They also both have the same picture profiles built in, PPO to PP10, and the Mark II offers just like the original ZV-1 product showcasing. Now, they both also use the same battery, which according to Sony will give you about 45 minutes, but in my experience with the ZV-1, could depend on whether you're shooting 4K or whatever. I get more like 30 minutes out of this. That's pretty much all they kept. So let's talk about the seven main differences between these two cameras that I need you to know about in order to make the right decision for you. At first glance, these cameras look pretty much identical. There's a few differences in the exterior, but honestly nothing significant enough to mention in this video. The thing that I will mention though, is that it seems like the ZV-1 Mark II is a little bit blacker than the original ZV-1, which is something that I really like. The most important difference in exterior is this button right here. Now on the original ZV-1, one. This is the mode button and that would allow you to switch between all of those modes. Now on the new Mark II they have simplified this button by changing it to photo, video and SNQ. Now SNQ is basically just slow motion and I think that they have simplified this button in a good way because now it's so easy to switch from photo to video and then on the screen you can select which video mode you want to shoot in. The screen by the way has now also been upgraded. Now you can basically change all the settings on the screen by just pressing on them which wasn't possible on the original ZV-1. With that camera you could do some basic things like pressing on the screen to track a subject for example and I think this makes the Mark II actually a lot easier to use for the everyday vlogger because now you cannot just change the settings on screen but you can also swipe up to get the function menu or swipe to the left or the right to either hide all the settings or get them back. The menu of the Mark II has actually gotten an update too because they've basically just adapted the newer Sony menu that you see on the newer Sony cameras to this camera as well so if you're using newer Sony cameras this will make a little bit bit more sense to you than the old menu that is available in the original ZV-1. Now let's talk about something that is so important for us vloggers the lens. The new ZV-1 Mark II has an 18 to 50 millimeter lens, which is something that I was really hoping to see. I've been using the original ZV-1 for about a year. I've vlogged a ton with it and I always felt like it was a little bit too tight because this camera has a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, but then when you use active stabilization, which is something that I really recommend, it crops in a little bit more, which makes it just intimate and tight when it comes to vlogging. So even though I have used this with a lot of joy, I'm very excited to see that this now has a wider lens. Even with active stabilization turned on, you still get a really nice wide shot. However, and there is actually two howevers when it comes to this lens. The first however has everything to do with the latter part. So 18, great. 50, the thing is, with the original ZV-1, we got a 24 to 70. Now we get an 18 to 50. Now, whether or not you need that extra zoom for your vlogs totally depends on you. So I cannot really say much about that. If you do zoom in a lot in your videos, it's actually not going to be too much of a deal breaker because yes, the optical zoom is until 50 millimeters, but the digital zoom or clear image zoom goes up to about 70 or 75. So you basically get an equivalent to this, but there's two things that I notice when I use a digital zoom on this camera. One, you cannot press the screen anymore to track anything and two, you will lose face tracking. So those are just two things that you want to keep in mind if you want to use a digital zoom on the Mark II. The other however, which is a bigger however for me, is not the vocal length but the aperture. The ZV-1 Mark II has an aperture of f1.8 till 4, whereas the original ZV-1 has an aperture of f1.8 to f2.8. Now, very simply put, if you don't know what aperture is, basically the lower the number, the wider the aperture, which means more light can come into the sensor, which is great if you shoot a lot in low light situations. And it allows you to get shots with that creamy blurry background that we all so love. So if you shoot at 18 millimeters with the Mark II, you still get that f1.8 but if you zoom in, the minimal aperture is f4. So this means less light can come in, so it's a little bit less ideal for dark environments, and you get a little bit less of a blurry background, but I honestly don't think that you use that camera for that anyway, and I personally think that f4 is still good enough for vlogging. But the reason why I said this is a big however is because I really like the ability that with a camera this small, the original ZV-1, you could still get a nice f2.8 when you're zooming in, because it just makes its camera a bit more versatile.
One more feature that the Mark II offers that the original does not is the cinematic vlogging mode. Now this allows you to make your shots look more like the movies, more cinematic by adding black bars and adding a color grade in camera. I think this is super fun for beginners and people are uncomfortable editing this in post. However, if you do have the skills, I would say probably just shoot in at least neutral because if you end up not liking it, you cannot take out the bars and you cannot take away the color grade. This is coming from an editor and a videographer who is very comfortable with cameras. So if you aren't as comfortable again, or you don't have the skills, I could definitely see how this could be a fun feature to really spice up your videos, for example. One thing you're absolutely gonna love about the ZV-1 Mark II is the microphone. It has the exact same microphone as the original ZV-1, but you can change the directivity on the ZV-1 Mark II. So this means that if you're in front of the camera, you can change the directivity to front. Now I've set it to all directions, so you should probably be hearing sounds coming from all different directions. If you want, you can also change it to rear and auto but obviously if you're vlogging front is going to be the best for you now the original zv1 could recognize a human target but the mark ii can not only recognize a human target but also an animal target now this might not be relevant to you at all but i personally love starring my cats in my vlogs and they really steal the show so i think for that it's really exciting to have an animal target on this now as well obviously this is just my opinion so i would love to know what you think about the improvements on the mark ii and whether you're interested in getting the mark one or the Mark II. If you want to get the Mark II, there will be a link in the description. And if you're interested in the Mark I and you want to learn more about it, make sure that you watch my real world review right here. And if you want to learn how to make really good vlogs, check out this video.